Good evening and God bless you. This is Elder Brantley speaking and welcome to Arpazzo Ministries. We're the ministry in the cloud, preparing to meet Jesus in the clouds. Thank you for joining me on today. I have an interesting Bible study uh, that is dealing with Old Testament and New Testament scripture uh, relative to prophecy in the future, namely uh, the battle of Armageddon, as well as the wrath of God uh, during his great supper. So why don't we start off with a word of prayer. I always acknowledge to the Lord in whatever I do. It says to acknowledge the Lord in all thine ways. Lean not to thine own understanding, but trust in him with all thine heart, and he shall direct thy path. So let's start with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we magnify your name. We thank you for this opportunity to break the bread of life. We thank you for your word, which is a light to our path, a lamp unto our feet. Father, we ask that you speak, Lord. We ask that you, Lord, minister to the hearer. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit saith unto the church. Have your way in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So we're going to begin our study, two passages of Scripture, mainly the first coming from the book of 1 Kings, the 21st chapter. And then also we're going to take a look at the book of Ezekiel, chapter 39. So let us begin with um, the book of 1 Kings, the 21st chapter, and that's beginning at verse 18. Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth, whither he has gone down to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou killed and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus saith the Lord, In the place where dogs lick the blood of Naboth shall dogs lick thy blood even thine. And Ahab said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? And he answered, I have found thee, because thou hast sold thyself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee, and will take away thy posterity, and will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel, and will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat and like the house of Basha, the son of Ahijah. For the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Him that dieth of Ahab in the city, the dog shall eat. And him that dieth in the field, shall the fowls of the air eat. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. That's an interesting passage of scripture. And um, I would say the topic uh, for this Bible study is that God will feed you to the dogs. I know that's rough. I was struggling with the message, with the topic. Uh, but that is the topic God has given me to teach on today. And that's that God will feed you to the dogs. Now, this occurred in Israel to King Ahab and his queen wife, Jezebel. And also, uh, it will happen again in the future. And as I mentioned earlier, this ties to a prophetic scripture, which is found in the book of Revelation. Because in, here in the Old Testament, it was Ahab whose blood was licked up by dogs, and it was Elijah that prophesied that Jezebel would be eaten by dogs. And we're going to find in the book of Ezekiel, as well as in the book of Revelation, that the Lord, through his prophet, is speaking of another great event. And I'm going to read Ezekiel 39, verses 17 through 22. And thou, son of man, thus saith the Lord God, speak unto every feathered fowl and to every beast of the field, 
Assemble yourselves and come, gather yourselves on every side to my sacrifice, that I do sacrifice for you. Even a great sacrifice upon the mountains of Israel, that ye may eat flesh and drink blood. Ye shall eat the flesh of the mighty and drink the blood of the princes of the earth, of rams, of lambs, and of goats, of bullocks, all of them fatlings of Bashan. And ye shall eat fat till ye be full, and drink blood till ye be drunken of my sacrifice, which I have sacrificed for you. Thus ye shall be filled at my table with horses and chariots, with mighty men, and with all men of war, saith the Lord God. So the, Ezekiel is speaking of a future event. And this corresponds with the book of Revelation, chapter 19, which speaks of a great supper. It speaks of two suppers, actually, in Revelation 19. It speaks of the marriage supper of the Lamb that will occur in heaven uh, during that time. But it also speaks of the Lord's Supper, the Great Supper. And in chapter 19, verse 17, it reads, And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. So here we have Revelation uh, chapter 19 corresponding with Ezekiel chapter 39. And it speaks of a great supper. This will be at the Battle of Armageddon. And with regard to the timeline, this takes place uh, during the day of the Lord, which is a great day where God, through his son Jesus Christ, will pour out his wrath and he will tread the winepress, as Isaiah spoke of, with his garments will be stained with the blood of men for rejecting uh, him when he came uh, the first time as um, the Messiah. But before we get into uh, that supper and the fact that then God will feed uh, you to the dogs, um, let us give a little background as to what occurred in the Old Testament to Ahab and Queen Jezebel. As I mentioned, Elijah the Tishbite was prophesying during that day. And the wickedness of Israel was at an all-time high. As I read previously, no other king did as wicked as Ahab. For some reason or another, Israel could not shake the worship of the false god Baal. Baal in the uh, Hebrew um, is, uh, means Lord, and Israel worshipped the Baal. Uh, they worshipped him in the wilderness. Uh, they were uh, bewitched by Balaam, and um, they began to worship Baal. Um, it was through seduction of women that they began to worship Baal, and it just crept into the kingdom of Israel, and they were never able to shake it. But here at this particular time when Elijah was prophesying, Ahab, who was the king of Israel of the northern kingdom, remember it was split in two. You had the northern kingdom, which was composed of 10 tribes, and you had the southern kingdoms, which was composed of uh, Benjamin and Judah. And um, where Ahab was king, he married Jezebel, who was the daughter of a high priest of Baal. And that high priest was in Sidon, uh, which was the sister city to Tyre. And that was on the western coast of uh, the land of Canaan. And they were Phoenicians. And Ahab decided, I guess it was a political marriage, to take uh, Jezebel as his bride. And as a result, Jezebel uh, plunged the northern kingdom into a, a very deep state of idolatry. 
to the extent where there was even a temple that was erected uh, in Samaria, which was the capital of the Northern Kingdom. And that temple was dedicated to Baal worship. So God was very angry with Ahab and with Jezebel. You know the story where Elijah challenged the prophets, uh, the false prophets of Jezebel, and contended with them on Mount Carmel and said, uh, why, meaning Israel, are you betwixt two opinions? If God be God, worship him, but if Baal be God, worship him. And there was a contest and both of the sides uh, set up altars and Elijah said, whoever God answers by fire, he will be Lord, he will be God. And the prophets of Baal, they established their altar and they didn't hear from Baal because Baal was a dumb God. He didn't exist, he was a false God. And even Elijah joked in a way and was sarcastic and said, maybe you need to wake your God up because they were cutting themselves and uh, offering their own blood as a sacrifice to uh, have their false God to answer to them. Um, but, God, but Baal could not answer because he was a false idol. Um, but Elijah, when he set up his altar, he uh, laid sacrifice, an animal sacrifice upon the altar. He dug a trench around it, poured water uh, in the trench, prayed to the Lord, and God answered by fire. Not only did the fire of God consume the sacrifice, but it also licked up the water, which let the false prophets know and the people of Israel know that God was indeed God. God knows how to show you who he is. All you have to do is call on the name of the Lord. For whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I'm here to entreat you while I'm doing this Bible study, call on the name of the Lord and see if he will not answer you by fire. And that fire today is the gift of the Holy Spirit. So getting back to this contest, as a result of the Lord answering by fire, Elijah gave the order to the men of Israel to kill all of Jezebel's prophets. And at that time, word got back to Jezebel and she put a contract out on uh, Elijah and had Elijah to run and hide in a cave because Jezebel said, just like you killed these prophets by this time tomorrow, I'm gonna do the same to you. Uh, so Elijah went running. Then we see in chapter 21 that now, after all this was done, Ahab um, and uh, Jezebel lived in Jezreel, which is near Samaria. And what's interesting with Jezreel, and I want you to remember this fact, Jezreel, or rather uh, Megiddo, is in the valley of Jezreel. That's an important fact for us to remember because when we discuss the Battle of Armageddon, you will hear the Valley of Jezreel and also the Plain of Megiddo. So here, this is uh, the place, the venue where Ahab was. And next to the king's palace was a man that uh, lived by the name of Naboth. And he was known as Naboth the Jezreelite because he was from Jezreel. And there he had a vineyard. And that vineyard uh, caught Ahab's eye. And for some reason or another, King Ahab coveted Naboth's vineyard. And when he asked Naboth for the vineyard, he said he would pay him uh, for the property Naboth said, I can't give you the property because this is the inheritance of my fathers. In other words, it has sentimental value. It, 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 was, it didn't have a price because it meant a lot to Naboth because this was an inheritance. And sometimes when it comes to property, you don't want to sell it because it has value that, that's priceless. But the king went away sad and his disposition was very depressed. And on that particular day, his wife, Queen Jezebel, came and asked him, well, what's wrong? And Nab not Naboth, but uh, King Ahab responded and said, 
Well, I asked Naboth for his vineyard, and I told him I'll give him money for it, but he denied me and said that this land was the inheritance of his fathers. And Jezebel said, what? Why are you so upset? Why are you so depressed, having a sad countenance? Aren't you the king of Israel? Isn't the land you can do anything with you want with it? I'll tell you what, leave it to me and I'll go and get the land for you. So she decided uh, to usurp the king's authority, act on his behalf, and sent out letters of invitation for um, a type of uh, feast or celebration. And Naboth was the man of honor. But at this celebration, they hired these sons of Belial, these wicked men, and they told them to raise a false witness against Naboth. Tell the people that Naboth blasphemed God. And what they did, they lied by Jezebel's order. And because they lied on Naboth, the men of Israel grabbed Naboth, took him out and stoned him to death. And Jezebel went back to Ahab and said, I took care of it, got rid of Naboth, the land is yours to possess. Now keep in mind, this is the, again, this is the land of Jezreel. This was a land that Naboth lust, not Naboth, Naboth, but King Ahab lust after. And as a result, he stole another man's property and used death, murder to do so. So after this occurred, that's when God told Elijah, you go down there, and you speak to Ahab, and you let Ahab know that I know what he did. And because he did this wickedness on top of the other wickedness, having uh, Israel uh, stooped in Baal worship, well, what's gonna happen to you, Ahab, is that when you die, the dogs are gonna lick your blood. And with regard to your wife, Jezebel, the dogs are gonna eat her flesh. And not only that, your posterity will be cut off. Your sons and your daughters will be cut off. The name of Ahab will be no more. What a sad commentary when God cuts you off, cuts off your posterity, having your name blotted out from under heaven. What a shame it is that God will say that you have done so much evil that I'm going to feed you to dogs. And you know what? That's going to happen again. And it's confirmed, as I read in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 39, and also in Revelation chapter 19. Now, in Ezekiel 39, remember, that is a continuation of Ezekiel 38 which speaks of Gog and Magog. Gog being the chief prince of Magog, which is the land of Magog, which is north of Israel. And in Ezekiel 38, Gog, and Mag Gog of Magog will make a confederacy with the surrounding nations, and it, they're named. Goma, Togomar are named also some of the uh, southern nations, Arab nations, put is one of the nations. Let's go to uh, Ezekiel 38 and look at the nations that are spoken of. So Persia, which is modern day Iran, Ethiopia, Libya. I mentioned Gomer and Togomar. Those are uh, the nations near uh, Russia. Uh, Gog is Russia, and it will be Gog that will form this alliance with Arab nations to come against Israel. Now, remember I mentioned about uh, Jezreel and that that will actually be the site of the Battle of Armageddon, which is in the city of Megiddo. Megiddo is a plain, a vast plain, uh, in the land of uh, the valley of Jezreel, where both Ahab and Jezebel lived, and where Naboth had his vineyard. Now, when we look in 1 Kings 
chapter 22, after Elijah prophesied that uh, Ahab and Jezebel will die a horrible death and that Jezebel will be eat, eaten by dogs and that the blood of Ahab will be licked up by uh, dogs as well. In the following chapter, we see that King Jehoshaphat uh, came up north to see Ahab. And while he was there, King Jehoshaphat, or rather Ahab, said to King Jehoshaphat, um, why don't you be in confederate with me? Why don't you join me? Why? Because in Syria, uh, they possess Ramoth Gilead, which is a city that was given to uh, Israel. It was a Canaanite city, and it was in the land of Bashan. Uh, and if you know, uh, back when Joshua was conquering uh, the land in Israel, uh, the kingdom of Bashan belonged to the uh, king whose name was Og. And Og was this huge giant. Some say that um, he was Nephilim, but that's not what the Bible says. The Bible called uh, Og Raphaim which is a different type of giant. Uh, Raphaim, and if you look at one of my previous videos about Nephilim and whether or not they exist today, Nephilim were pre-flood. Raphaim were post-flood. Uh, the son of Anak, they were Raphaim. Abraham encountered giants. The Zumans, um, they were called. The Emums, they were Raphaim. They lived in the land of Canaan. And Og was the king of Bashan. And there, Ramoth Gilead was taken into uh, possession uh, in, by the Syrians. Now today, Ramoth Gilead, believe it or not, is the Golan Heights. Some would pronounce it the Golan Heights. But regardless of how you pronounce it, today, Ramoth Gilead is the Golan Heights. And here, Jehoshaphat was asked by King Ahab to join him to capture the Golan Heights. Now, you're probably getting a feel as to where this is going when we look at prophetic events. So now, uh, they, uh, Jehoshaphat is willing to join his forces. He said, my people or your people, my army is your army, so let us uh, go into battle. Let us take Ramoth Gilead. Let's take the Golden Heights uh, because it belongs to the people of Israel. And it did. Um, but remember, Ahab was a wicked king. So Jehoshaphat, being a good king uh, who did serve the Lord, uh, he asked Ahab, why don't you consult the Lord? Do you have any uh, men of, uh, of integrity, men, spiritual men? Do you have a prophet um, that can tell us whether or not it would be good for us to go uh, into battle against the Syrians to capture Ramoth Gilead? So there were about 400 false prophets. I mean, Ahab and Jezebel had prophets all over the place. And it's almost like today, you have prophets a dime a dozen. Um, you have prof prophets on every street corner. Um, and it's not necessarily spelled P-R-O-P-H-E-T, but it's spelled P-R-O-F-I-T, those making profit off the people of God. But here in Ahab's time, uh, they had 400 prophets that came uh, to see the king, uh, both Ahab and also King Jehoshaphat. And Ahab asked, will, the, will God uh, give us the victory over our enemies? Will we capture Ramoth Gilead, which today is the Golan Heights? And these 400 uh, false prophets says, yes, God is going to give you the victory, Ahab and Jehoshaphat. He's going to deliver uh, the enemy into your hands. But you know what? Jehoshaphat knew that these were yes men. You got to be careful when you have yes men all around you. Yes men will yes you into trouble. It's good to know that you're with people that are equally yoked with you, spiritual individuals who will give you a word from the Lord. But Jehoshaphat discerned this and he said, is there someone that will tell us the truth 
do you have anyone that's not going to be a yes man for you, King Ahab? And Ahab said, yeah, I have somebody. And uh, he's in the dungeon right now. He's a troublemaker. But his name is Micaiah. And Jehoshaphat said, well, get Micaiah. I want to hear from him. Uh, if he's truly a man of God, that's who we need to hear. And if you, uh, being about to embark on an endeavor, you need to hear from God. So don't surround yourself with prophets uh, or preachers that just want to uh, prophesy blessings into your life. You want to hear the truth. You want to hear what thus saith the Lord. You want to hear from an anointed man of God. And that doesn't necessarily come from someone who is popular because you got a lot of popular televangelists out there that just want to prophesy prosperity, but you want to hear the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You shall hear the truth and the truth shall make you free. So always embrace the truth. Search for the truth and search the scriptures for yourself. So getting back to um, the account here, so they brought Micaiah up from the dungeon and Ahab asked and Jehoshaphat asked Micaiah, Micaiah, should we go to battle against the Syrians, the capture Ramoth, Gilead, the Golan Heights? And Micaiah knew that Ahab uh, called him a troublemaker, knew that Ahab wanted him to be a yes man. So in a way, Micaiah mocked him and said, yes. Go up against the Syrians. God is going to give you the victory. As if to say, that's what you want me to say. And then what was interesting is that King Ahab knew that Micaiah was mocking him. And he said, Micaiah, you know that's not what the Lord told you to say. For some reason or another, the world knows when you're not speaking the truth as a true man of God. Don't let the world catch you. Uh, doing something you're not supposed to do because they'll call you on it. And Ahab, being a wicked man, knew that Micaiah was not speaking with thus saith the Lord, even though Micaiah was mocking him. So Micaiah said, you know what? You're right. I'm going to tell you what thus saith the Lord. If you go into battle, you're going to die in battle. You will not get the victory. As a matter of fact, the men, the people will scatter because they will have no master. The sheep will have no shepherd, which means that King Ahab will be killed in battle. And then you have one of the false prophets that came and made a horn of iron and pushed back using uh, symbolism with the horn of iron saying to Ahab, that's not true. God is going to push back your enemies just like he, I'm holding this horn of iron. This is how God is going to drive back your enemies. And then he got angry with Micaiah and he slapped Micaiah uh, in his face. And Micaiah uh, prophesied against him and then uh, and prophesied of his death for slapping him. And then Micaiah had a vision and he said, I see the heavens open. And I see the Lord, and on his right and on his left side, I see the hosts of heaven. And the Lord spoke and said, who shall go um, and deceive these kings to go into battle? Who shall go and be a lying spirit in their mouths? And uh, some of the hosts said, I'll go. And another said, I'll go. But then there was a lying spirit that came and approached the Lord. And the lying spirit said, I'll go and get into the mouths uh, of these kings. And in verse 23 of chapter 22, first Kings, it says, now, therefore, behold, the Lord have put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets, and the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. So this is Micaiah saying that a lying spirit is going to get into the mouths of these prophets and they're going to convince Jehoshaphat and Ahab to go into battle. Now that's important because remember, I spoke about the battle of Armageddon, which I believe is the battle of Gog and Magog. 
I believe the battle of Gog and Magog is going to set off Armageddon. And the not just during Armageddon, and I don't have much time to go into um, a timeline, but I believe that Gog and Magog have a double reference. It will happen not only uh, during the Battle of Armageddon, but it will also happen at the last rebellion, which will be after um, the millennial kingdom. After the thousand years, when Satan is loosed, he will go out to deceive again, and he will raise up Gog once more to do battle with Jesus Christ in the kingdom of Israel. And that's when the Lord is going to rain fire down from heaven on those that were deceived and rebelled against him. So Gog and Magog has a double reference, and there's scripture for that, but I'm pressed for time. Um, but if we go to Revelation chapter 16, we will see another passage of scripture that speaks of the battle of Armageddon. And looking at verse 12 of Revelation 16, and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. So look at the timeline. This is the sixth vial or the sixth bowl judgment because you have seven seals, you have seven trumpets during the tribulation period, and you have the seven vials or bowl judgments. So this is the sixth vile or bold, judge, bold judgment, which is during the wrath of God, during the day of the Lord, where Jesus Christ pours out the wrath of God upon the earth. And this is the sixth bold judgment, which puts it toward the end of the great tribulation. And this is where the start of the battle of Armageddon occurs. And it says, and the water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So these are the kings of the east that are coming to march into the battle of Armageddon. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. So these are spirits of devils working miracles. And they will be working these miracles to gather men into the battle of Armageddon. And it says, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called, in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Armageddon in the Hebrew means the hill or the Mount of Megiddo. So again, we have this battle, this great battle um, at the close of the tribulation period that is occurring. But what happens is, is that in verse 13, it said that three unclean spirits like frogs came out of the mouth of the dragon, which is Satan, and out of the mouth of the beast, which is the Antichrist, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Uh, some call that the unholy trinity. But out of their mouths will come forth these spirits of devils, these unclean spirits. And they're going to be used um, to go out and deceive the various kings of the world. Just like the same lying spirit that said they were go it was going forth to get into the mouth of the prophets in um, Ahab and Jehovah's. Jehoshaphat's day to deceive them to go into battle. Uh, the same will be these unclean spirits that will come out like frogs. Now, if you remember, remember during the days of Moses and the plagues, there was a plague of frogs in Egypt, which meant that frogs went everywhere. They went into the kitchen. They went into the bathroom. They went into your uh, uh, hall uh, where they would, with places of worship, they went 
everywhere in Egypt. And the same with these spirits of devils, these unclean spirits are going to go out like frogs and they're going to go through all the earth deceiving the kings to go into this battle called Armageddon. Now, um, that the type of that was the uh, confederacy with Ahab and with Jehoshaphat. And here... Uh, they're in Megiddo. Now, why is the battle of Armageddon going to occur? Well, in Ezekiel 38, God said, I'm going to put hooks in the jaws of uh, Gog. And I'm going to bring Gog down in confederate with those other nations I mentioned. And they're going to do that because they're looking to take a spoil. And that spoil is mentioned in verse 12 of chapter 38. It says to take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn thy hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. So in other words, the battle of Armageddon will be to seize a spoil. And remember, we mentioned when Ahab and Jehoshaphat went into battle, uh, they went to attack the, Sir the nation of Syria over uh, Ramoth Gilead, which is the Gullin Heights. Now, if you study or have read in your current events, you notice uh, or noticed that Israel recently found gas and oil in the Golan Heights. Also, they found gas and oil in the Valley of Jezreel. So these are two areas in Israel which are in close proximity that are changing the geopolitical and economic structure of the world, the fact that Israel has found these resources, which means that Israel uh, can, will no longer be dependent upon uh, the Gulf states, no longer dependent upon Iran. Uh, the United States, uh, although it has its resources in America, uh, will not be dependent upon OPEC oil or gas anymore. Europe may not be dependent upon uh, gas and oil from the OPEC nations or even from Russia, because if they can get a supply from Israel, um, Israel can just have a pipeline go straight into Europe. So this is the spoil that's in the Golan Heights, which is really Ramoth Gilead. This is the spoil that's located not too far from uh, the Golan Heights, which is found in the Valley of Jezreel which their gas and oil deposits there. So there will be this lying spirit that's going to go and deceive these nations of Ezekiel 38 to go into battle, to come and, and take possession of what's in the Golan Heights. And remember, the U.S. just said through our president that um, he recognizes the sovereignty of Israel over the Golan Heights. And that sovereignty is there for a reason. And the nations, Gog and Magog and Goma and Togomar, and then the Arab nations, which is the southern nation south of Israel, obviously they don't like that um, because they are the world's reserves for and resource for oil uh, and gas. So... I believe that the Battle of Armageddon will be as a result um, of a lie, a pretext to go in and to take the spoil uh, from Israel. But remember, the topic of this message is that God will feed you to the dogs. And those that are in the Battle of Armageddon that will try to take what belongs to God, because God put that resource there. And God gave that resource through the 
uh, patriarch Abraham through the Abraham covenant, God swore, and uh, he doesn't take back his word. Um, so those resources belong um, to Israel. And uh, those that think that they can come in and take possession, despite the fact that Ahab uh, did the same thing to Naboth, but you saw what happened to Ahab and Jezebel, because at that battle um, over Ramoth Gilead, um, Ahab had disguised himself uh, and put on another type of garment so that he would not be identified. But that didn't stop God from doing uh, what he said he would do. You can disguise yourself, you can run, but you can't hide from God. God, if he has marked you for judgment, you better believe if you don't repent, you will be judged. God will feed you to the dogs if you don't repent. But God has given you that opportunity. And even though uh, Ahab died, God still, through Ahab's repentance, if you read the latter part of chapter 21, after Elijah prophesied to him, he did feel contrite. And he uh, rent his clothes and he uh, bathed himself in, in, in ashes and put on sackcloth because he knew Elijah didn't play games. And God heard his repented heart. And he said, I'm going to bring your death to pass, but I'm not going to cut off your posterity in your days. And God did have compassion which means that you can still repent. If you don't want to be fed to the dogs, you can still repent. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ into your life. The Bible says to repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Here Ahab repented and God deferred the cutting off his posterity after he died and not while he died or during his life. But nevertheless, the prophecy that the doors would lick up his blood still occurred because the Syrians uh, was able to shoot an arrow and it wedged in between his armor and it mortally and fatally wounded Ahab to the extent where he died in Jezreel, which is the site of Armageddon, he died in his chariot and his blood leaked out. And while his blood pooled to the floor of his chariot, here come the dogs licking and drinking his blood, having a blood soda uh, with the blood of King Ahab. And then later, uh, after Ahab's death, uh, Jezebel was living in the, in the palace and they had 70 sons. And God raised up Jehu, who was a mighty soldier. And he went to the palace and said, God told me to take Jezebel out. And he shouted up to the eunuchs in the tower, if you, uh, if you on our side, then throw this woman out of the window. And the eunuchs threw Jezebel out of the window. She hit the ground and died. And the Bible says that the dogs came to eat of her flesh. And when they were done, the only thing that was left was her skull and the palms of her hands. Don't let God feed you to the dogs. You need to repent. Those in the battle of Armageddon, after the Lord comes back for his church, they will be fed to the dogs. Don't you know that God is going to have a great supper and he's going to feed all those in that battle? There's going to be, as the Bible says, I believe it's in the book of Joel, multitudes and multitudes of people that will be in this battle. It will be a great slaughter in the valley of Jezreel, in Megiddo, which is in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And there, uh, the Bible even speaks of there being hail that will fall from heaven. Now remember, in uh, Scripture, it speaks of hail falling. And if you bear with me, 
I'll find that for you. Even Jer before we go there, even Jeremiah mentions in chapter 7, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that it shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley, and the carcasses of this people shall be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth, and none shall fray them away of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter, for they shall bury in Tophet till there be no place. So here, um, even Jeremiah is speaking of the battle of Armageddon and that there will be a great feast and that God will call all the fowls of the air uh, and the beasts of the earth to come and feast on the blood and the flesh of men. And then also in Revelation chapter 16, verse 21, it says, and there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. So now that takes place during the seventh bowl judgment, because in verse 17, it says that the seventh angel poured out his vial. And this is gonna cause, remember, the sixth bowl judgment gathered the kings into the battle of Armageddon. The river Euphrates was dried up. In the seventh bowl or vial, the angel pours it out. And then during the battle of Armageddon, there's going to be a great hail. And it says that the hail has the weight of a talent. Now, a talent of silver was known to be about 100 pounds. A talent of gold, 200 pounds. So these are huge hailstones that will fall from heaven and it will squash these men that are in the battle of Armageddon like grapes. That's why Isaiah says that Jesus is going to try the winepress alone in his wrath. These hailstones will be like a winepress and the blood will gush out of the bodies of men. They'll be crushed to death. And the Bible says that the blood is going to be so much that it will rise to the horse's bridle. Imagine the height of a horse and that the blood will pool to the extent of it being at the horse's bridle. God will feed you to the dogs. Don't be part of that. Repent. Don't be part of the great supper of God's wrath. You want to be in the marriage supper, which happens in heaven, not in the supper of the Lord's wrath, which happens in Armageddon. Now, it also has another relevance, and that has to do in the book of Hosea. Because when God calls all of the beasts of the field and the fowls of the earth to feast on the blood and flesh of men, it's for a reason. Because God is going to establish a covenant with the animals on behalf of Israel. Remembers Isaiah's prophecy of the millennial kingdom and how the lion will lie down with the sheep and how the child will play with the snake and how the animals will be peaceful. Well, this sacrifice of men in the battle of Armageddon to the extent where uh, the animals will become drunk off the blood and off the fat of men in the battle of Armageddon. Hosea chapter 2 verse 18 says, And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven and with the creeping things of the ground. And I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth and will make them to lie down safely. That is the millennial kingdom. That's how the fear of man will come out of the animals because this great supper will be God's opportunity to, to, to have vengeance, not only for himself, but on behalf of the animals because we have slaughtered so many animals throughout the centuries, throughout the millennia, not just for food, 
but we've done it for sacrifice. Because of our sins, we had to sacrifice. We had to be a life for a life. But thank God for Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God. For Jesus was slain before the foundation of the world. Thank God for Jesus, who was the ultimate sacrifice. You don't have to slay any lambs anymore. You don't have to put the blood on the door. For God has taken the place uh, of the lamb. Or rather, Jesus is the lamb, and he has taken our place. And now, because of him, uh, we have everlasting life. So here, this great supper, God will make a covenant on behalf of Israel. And this will restore, during the millennial kingdom, peace, not just between God and man, but between man and beast. The fear of man will no longer be in the heart of animals anymore. It will be like it was pre-flood, before the flood, when Noah was bringing the animals into the ark. What a beautiful time that will be. But if you don't repent, if you don't receive Jesus in your life, then God will feed you to the dogs. He will feed you to the animals just like he fed Ahab and Jezebel because they lusted after somebody else's possession. And in the Battle of Armageddon, Gog and Magog and his confederacy will be lusting after the spoil and the possession what God has put in Israel. Ramoth Gilead is the Golden Heights. That's what Ahab and Jehoshaphat fought over. Jezreel, where, it's, where the city of Megiddo is. They recently found oil and gas deposits there. That's why that's gonna be a target place. That's why the battle is gonna occur there. God has already established the end at the beginning. It's up to you to get with his program. I encourage you, accept the Lord, repent of your sins, be baptized, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I know I did a lot there, but I behoove you to take, a, take note of the scriptures, do some studying for yourself, go back and see what I read uh, to you and um, so that you can uh, receive confirmation out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Let every word be established. Amen. So look uh, forward to seeing you on next time. I welcome your comments. Um, at the end of this video, um, you're able to post a comment. Let me know if this uh, Bible study was a blessing to you. And um, we'll see you again. God bless you. And again, this is uh, Elder Brantley from Harpazo Ministries. We're the ministry in the cloud, preparing to meet Jesus in the clouds. Amen. God bless you.